Hey guys, Jenna here. Before we get into today's awesome video tour, I just want to say that I know we're all going through a really strange time right now, and it seems like every time that you turn on the television, there's another new update that can make you feel a little down. So I hope that my videos are a little bit of a break from that. All I ever wanted to do was make videos that have a positive outlook on life and maybe show an alternative to a situation that you never thought of before. So I hope that this video and all the others that I'm producing during this time will make you smile. So in today's video, you're gonna meet a very motivated young woman named Miranda who decided to build a tiny house where everything inside of it is a work of art. I'm Miranda Ashleen, and this is Aubergine the Tiny House. Come take a look inside. So my entire house is a piece of art. We built it as a public art project with over 50 volunteers, but then the goal was that every single thing inside the house would either be handmade or hand altered by somebody. So I estimate that there are at least 100 pieces of art in 160 square feet, and that's the floor cloth, the front door, the ceramic dishes, even I finally found a handmade toilet paper holder, which I looked for for a long time. <laughs> It's easy to forget that unless you're standing on an untouched forest in the middle of nowhere, everything around you was at some point made by someone. And a piece of art connects you very directly to the person that made it, which humanizes both the object you're using and your experience of being surrounded by it. So I built the house myself with my mom and over 50 volunteers. We built it as a public art project over the course of a year, but we only built on the weekends. So we estimate with everybody helping out, it was about a thousand hours total spread over weekends for the course of a year. And I had never built anything before. My mom is a set designer for theater, so she knew how to use all of the power tools, but she told me very clearly that everything in her career had only ever had to look good from the fifth row and came down after three weeks. So I had to really boister her confidence and my confidence at the same time so that we could do something that would hopefully stand up for longer than three weeks. One of the things people love most about my house are my wooden stairs. So I knew that I wanted to have a loft bed and I knew that I wanted to be able to get up to, into them without a ladder. But a friend of mine also told me that whatever storage you build, you will fill. So those storage stairs you often see, that's a lot of space actually to fill up. So my solution was I reached out to my friend Alex, who's a woodworker, and he built me these. So right now they're in the up position and as you can see, they take almost no room and they basically become a piece of artwork on the wall. It's made out of really beautiful maple wood. Um, but then when I need to go upstairs, I can just pull out this pin and the stairs come down. It's a pretty solid, you have to watch your head depending on how tall you are, but it's a pretty solid step up. I can run up and down them. My cat Moira runs up and down them all the time. This is Moira, <laughs> and say hi. This can extend so the drawers come out underneath. And these wooden boxes were made by a local woodworker named Alex. So each box comes out, and then the tops come out. They're actually two separate pieces, and then you have to kind of line them up. And you can just leave it like this. So sometimes I'll sit here and I'll put dinner or put my feet up so I have a little bit of extra room. Um, but I also can pull out this other one and make an extra guest bed.
then up here are all of my books. So I, I don't move very often, but I do host the annual Massachusetts Tiny House Festival, so I move at least once a year. And because of that, for most of the year things are just set out, but I do have things set up for when I move it. So these hooks I put a board in front of, and then you can see on the side here, there's a little, it's hidden in my artwork, uh, but there's a little hook there, and there's one right here. So I run a bungee cord across a board and these hooks keep it in place so that I don't have to take my books down every time I move. So I run the annual Massachusetts Tiny House Festival now because it gives people a chance to experience a lifestyle that otherwise they'd never be able to walk into. And it's been fascinating in the six years I've been in the tiny house movement to see it really grow as a social movement. So like any social movement, it's on a bell curve, right? And you have your first initiators, and then you have your early adopters, and then it starts to enter mainstream, and then suddenly there's this big uptick. And I think we're in that uptick right now. So we both have people who saw them on HGTV and just wanna come see them because they're cute. But we also have a lot more people who are saying, oh, this is not just dirty hippies in the woods. This is not just stigmatized living of poor people. I mean, this is a real solution for people from a variety of economic backgrounds to create a housing option for themselves. To find out about this year's festival, you can go to masstinyhousefestival.com. I've been, over the course of my three and a half years in the house, I've lived in two different backyards of really generous 70 year olds, randomly. So I send my thanks to the uh, eccentric boomer generation that is allowing me to live for free in their backyard. Um, so I actually haven't paid rent since I built my house and my house paid for itself in the rent that I saved at exactly three years. So now I just get to live for free. My newest seating in the tiny house is a rainbow hammock. Uh, I just got this, I've wanted this for years and put these two giant uh, eye hooks right into the four by fours that build the house. Uh, so they're incredibly sturdy. And then I can just hook all the way across. And this is where I hope one day I will have a fifth person come and stay with me in the tiny house so that we could have the guest bed, the guest hammock, and then my bed up there which can sleep two people. So let's see if I can do this without falling from this angle. Perfect. This is my new favorite place to sit in the tiny house and it's close enough that you can make yourself swing. So I sat here with my Christmas tree for a long time this year. But it's just nice, you know, if you live in a small space, it's nice to find new places to be. And now I can activate the air, which I had not been able to do before. So I found somebody else who had done this in their house and I just have been dreaming about it for years. <laughs> So before I lived in Aubergine, I lived with divorced parents and I moved back and forth a lot. I was then in college dorms and city apartments. I had lived in 26 different houses by the time that I was 21 years old. And so my house has given me stability and a place to call my own, to cover with art and color and human stories. And I think that's the biggest shift for me is that ironically, my house on wheels has given me a foundation. So I love being here every single day and being surrounded by the people who built it with me, who made the artwork. I think apart from that, going tiny has actually made me more of an environmentalist. I built it for purely economic reasons. It was really kind of cut and dry and then the art came in and then having this foundation came in and then I realized what a composting toilet was and my trash can is literally this big. <laughs> so I actually compost and I use my soft plastics to make eco bricks, which is actually a, a sustainable building material. And uh, we make them at the Tiny House Festival. So I would say that it has accidentally forced me to be really intentional because there's just no space for extra stuff. 
I mean, that seems so cliche, but there, there's no, there's no space for you to be mindless. So you have to be mindful about everything. Um, and thankfully there's less to be mindful about, so it doesn't take up as much time. <laughs> so I have pretty much all of the space that I need. I use a nature's head composting toilet, which I've found actually works really well. Like I said, I built my tiny house for economic reasons rather than environmental reasons, but I will say I have become an accidental advocate for composting toilets because I think the fact that we take human waste and combine it with fresh drinking water and make a biohazardous material rather than taking fertile soil, combining it with human waste and creating fertile soil is just mind boggling, but we're too scared to talk about it. So I've been really excited to use the uh, nature's head composting toilet and to be forced to reckon with my own waste streams and use streams because that's something I really didn't think about before I moved into my tiny house. And then on this side, I have a shower. Um, and you can see the walls of the shower are actually just roofing material. So this instead is metal and it has that beautiful blue color. Um, and then I have the curtain to close it all out. This is another thing that people really love in my tiny house. I wanted to create as open a floor plan as possible, so I can actually do yoga in the middle of my tiny house, which I love to do. I can play music, I can swing around with my guitar without hitting anything, and I can have dinners with up to four people. So this is an antique. It's probably three times as old as I am. And I, when I was building my house as a public art project, there was a gentleman down the street who watched the build. He thought it was really cool. And he just had this. It was all one piece. It was in his basement. And he came and he said, hey, I've got this folding table and chairs in my basement. Do you want it? Because I can't throw it away. It's too cool of a piece of furniture. And uh, I didn't think it was going to fit, but it actually has become one of my favorite parts of my house. So I can sit here comfortably with another person next to me. Uh, and then we can have two across the way. I do have four people coming over for dinner, so there will be five of us. So I will be sitting at the head of the table. Um, and then I hid a piece of my artwork behind the table here so that I wouldn't be wasting that piece of wall space. So you can only see this artwork when you're sitting down to, to dinner and then it disappears. But actually this uh, a partner to that painting hangs above my mom's dining room table. So whenever I sit here, I think of her. Now we can fold it away, clean up all the dinner dishes, and just like that, it's all gone. So I plan to live in the tiny house for the foreseeable future. Um, I want to have kids someday, and this house is not set up for that. I think I might be able to remodel it, but actually the plan is my mom, who built the whole house with me, has told me that this is her retirement home and that when I have kids and move into a slightly larger house, she'll live in our backyard as the built-in grandma babysitter. So she gets to live for free, I get free childcare, and everybody wins. Thanks for watching. Make sure to tune in every week for a new video and remember to stay positive.